watching SGT Times with me, Anurag Mishra. Let's have a look at the top stories. Student of Mass Communication shines in debate show with Srinitin Gadkari at TV9 Bharat Varsh Noida. India clamps down on Chinese steel, enacts five years anti-dumping duty as import rises 62%. U.S. lots the mega event in Delhi and says absolutely success. India needs much more clean energy to meet climate target. Now the news in detail. SGT University's Faculty of Mass Communication and Media Technology showcased exceptional talent in a spirited debate show. Let's have a look. The event featured a stimulating exchange of ideas on critical socio-political issues graced by the esteemed presence of Sri Nitin Gadkariji, Honorable Minister of Road Transport and Highways of India. The students exhibited exemplary eloquence, analytical prowess, and in-depth understanding of the subjects. Their commendable performance garnered praise from the audience and esteemed judges. SGT University expresses gratitude to Srinitin Gadkari for his invaluable presence and encouragement. This event serves as a testament to the institution's commitment to nurturing and honing the skills of future media leaders. Bureau report, SGT. India has enacted a five years anti-dumping duty targeting specific types of Chinese steel as per an official government notice. Let's have a look. The move comes amid a 62% rise in steel imports from China to India between April and July compared to last year's time frame. China sold 0.6 million metric tons to beat South Korea to become the biggest steel exporter to India. During this period, India's steel imports touched a record high in 2020, increasing by 23% to 2 million metric tons. China was the second largest steel exporter to India falling behind only South Korea. Steel Secretary Nagendra Nath Sinha stated earlier this week that the government was keeping a close eye on steel imports following apprehensions raised by the domestic industry about potential unfair trade practices by Chinese sellers. Bureau Report, SGT. Let's take a short break. We'll be back soon. SGT. Let's me question anything, even the university. I have visited other campuses too, but SGT has better infrastructure. Plus, it's hope. Here, we are not just students, we are emerging journalists. an opportunity to interact with renowned media experts. Asia's biggest shooting floor, latest equipment, practical learning, faculties from the industry, freedom of expression. Come, be a part of this revolution. SGT University, nurturing future leader. Welcome back after the break. The G20 Leader Summit wrapped up with enthusiasm. In Delhi, under India's presidency and United States lauded it as an absolute success. Let's have a look. The New Delhi Declaration reaffirmed that the G20 is the premier forum for international economic cooperation and the member countries acknowledged that the G20 is not the platform for geopolitical and security issues, although these issues can have consequences for the global economy. The G20 member countries called on all nations to respect core principles of international law. These principles include upholding territorial integrity and sovereignty, following international humanitarian laws and supporting the multilateral system that helps maintain global peace and stability. 
the new delhi declaration reads the peaceful resolution of conflicts and efforts to address crisis as well as diplomacy and dialogue are critical bureau report sgt india announced its arrival these years as the world's biggest country by population with promise to do things differently for india's presidency of the group of 20 prime minister narendra modi chose as its a theme a term of sanskriti scripture vasudeva kutumbakam emphasizing global unity let's have a look he had spoken of climate change alongside terrorism and pandemics as one of the big challenges the world faces with the g20 leader summit held over the weekend it's notable how quiet that green rhetoric has gotten that emphasis is less surprising when you consider how torrid this year's monsoon season has been hot and dry weather has caused the 7% to 9% of households with air conditioning to crank it up while farmers have switched on ground water irrigation pumps pushing demand from the grid to a record to 50 to 40 gigawatts on 1 september a rainfall shortage causing hydroelectric dams to run short and renewable installations that pushed coal consumption to record levels Output rose 13% from a year earlier in August to nearly 68 million tons. India's Ministry of Coal boasted last week. Bureau report SGT. That's all for today in SGT Times. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for more updates.